Hello, everyone, and welcome. Our guest today is Joe Tormos. Jor has been running buildings for 11 years and is currently in charge of all repairs, maintenance, and operations at Airbnb's headquarters here in San Francisco. Operational excellence has been a core value at Heinz, and for 60 years, it has been delivering unparalleled service, asset management, and energy efficiency in buildings all over the world. Excellent. Yeah, great. I'm happy to be here. As for Gridium, buildings use our software to fine-tune operations. Our chat today will focus on three main components of a preventive maintenance plan and what Joe is doing to start up PM at Airbnb. So Joe, let's get, let's get started. What do you like most about running the facility operations at a large tech company here in Silicon Valley? Well, uh, it's kind of a little different than typical building engineering in that you have you know one client and it's really a new frontier for Heinz to get, be getting into facility management. Uh, we kind of grow our, our business and be able to uh, take care of things that uh, that we don't normally do, you know, t- talking about kitchen facilities and mm-hmm. IT databases and stuff like that. But uh, it's very interesting to, to get into, you know, a, a field that's that's really blowing up and their and their needs and demands are a lot different than traditional uh, uh, building occupants and clients. So it's 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 a lot of it's very it's very, uh, very new and up and coming. Uh, as you know, Joe, I've had the the pleasure of enjoying one of those delicious lunches at Airbnb. What is it like to run a um, tech headquarters with such a large uh, kitchen operation? You know, we're we're kind of getting into the area where we're not used to dealing with these huge kitchen operations. There's some of these, you know, commercial kitchens that serve, you know, not just you know, like a restaurant serves a couple hundred people maybe, but this these places serve thousands of people a day. So you know, you have to keep all the you have to keep in mind that their their critical operations are a lot a lot more important uh, than just uh, you know base Lights. building operations. So it's yeah. definitely that, yeah, exactly, exactly. And it's uh, and it's all day long, right? It is all day long, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, uh, five days a week. So they uh, they really keep it going, and and you know, minimizing downtime for them is is huge and and critical. And they really use the they're, these are top of the line chefs, and and they're they're really you know top notch equipment. So try to keep them operating at their their best capacity. It's, it definitely provides a lot of challenges, but you get the benefit from really good food. Of course, you just had mentioned the difference between base building operations and kitchen facilities. What are some of the uh, specific you know pieces of equipment which you need to think about? as part of running the kitchen at Airbnb compared to the base building operations? Well, yeah, the, the, you know, the equipment that's in the kitchen, you know, is very unique and usually that, you know, Heinz and, and other, other entities to kind of define, define it as above standard equipment. So that's, you know, oven skillets, uh, ranges, uh, even up to the, you know, the, the hood systems, mm. uh, the exhaust hoods, grease, grease hood systems. Uh, they have uh, grease separation systems to keep, you know, uh, uh, the cooking grease from getting into the, you know, the sewer stream. So all those things are kind of not what we typically deal with, or they're, or they're, we do, we've deal, dealt with them, but on much smaller scales. These commercial kitchens are, are enormous and, you know, the, the volume they put out uh, is, is, you know, unbelievable. As part of the responsibilities you have for facilities engineering at Airbnb, and when I think about the differences between your job now and running a uh, a classic skyscraper in downtown San Francisco full of accountants and lawyers, what are some of the challenges um, in this in the new setting at a tech campus with a kitchen? Is it service levels? Um, is it re- retooling space? For different uses as had been originally designed maybe it's the construction management it's a, it's a big challenge you always have different clients and usually in a building you have multiple ones that you kind of have to deal with but kind of in the tech world they they really build around this this culture and and employee experience and we're part of that team facilities is part of that team along with you know security and you know stuff like that but sure. you know they really want the the employees to be feel like they're taken care of, you know, not have to deal with these, the, these regular things that you'd have to deal with in other settings, you know, where they're, they kind of get to focus on their work, but it's also an enjoyable space to be in every day. So in that, 
we have to, you know, vary, you know, the, the levels of service that we have to give and provide. It's a lot, it's a lot above and beyond. You know, we're, you know, Heinz is very, you know, uh, customer service based, which is why we're a great fit for it. But it also takes it to another level of we're really getting into, you know, the 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 company, the the tech company's culture. You know, if they need to change their space and they change their mind and then they're going off in more directions and they're hiring a lot of people all at once, mm -hmm. you know, we kind of have to adapt to that uh, a lot quicker than than we normally would. You know, it's it's some of these processes that we're we've that are tried and true that we've used for years might not work or they might need to be adjusted to really accompany or cater to these clients. You mentioned that the space needs to be enjoyable. Can you help our audience picture what the Airbnb HQ looks like? How do you describe it? I mean, it's really a, it's really a, you know, an open, open office concept for the most part. Um, and specifically with Airbnb, you know, it's very open office. So everybody kind of has, I actually a lot smaller space than just a bunch of cubicles, but which means you kind of are always interacting with the people around you. And then then they have these uh, Airbnb specifically, they have these uh, meeting rooms that are set up like listing rooms or, or r listings on their site from around the world. So you can and they they regear them towards to make them into conference rooms or small meeting rooms. So you feel like you're in you know, in, in Greece or in Italy or, or France or that sort of thing. So it's very, awesome. very unique, very unique space. And, and you know, a lot of people want to go on tours, uh, you know, here to, to check it out. And, and it makes for a neat environment. You know, you can feel like you're you, the, the whole idea is they're, they're, they belong anywhere. So you can go work in a cafe where it feels like you're at a, you know, really nice cafe and you know, outdoors and with the windows open, you can do your do your work there, but still be at work. And when you think about launching a PM program, what are some of the key benefits? Uh, I know that Heinz considers some of the key benefits of preventive maintenance to be, um, you know, the building equipment exceeding life, uh, expected uh, lifespans, optimal energy management, um, and of course, minimal unplanned shutdowns. How, how do you think about the the main benefits of preventive maintenance? Yeah, I mean, in in this environment, it's 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 a lot of it's very similar in that you know instead of but the, 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 where you're protecting the client's investment, they spend a lot of money on the space. They want it to look great. They want it to operate great. They want the people to feel like they're you know they're in an environment where they can be productive and flourish and and grow as a company, grow as you know employees and that that is that is very similar so you know we kind of make sure that the, the the we're protecting those investments you know we're 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 operating invisibly that's kind of a big thing that i i look at you know where if the sign of a good engineering program or pm program is that you you never experiences you know thing where things are down yeah. or where you know that's the that's the ideal it doesn't always happen that way of course and right. You know, especially when it comes to, you know, the, the maintenance of kitchen equipment, you know, being down for a day is a huge undertaking and a huge cost to the, to the company of Airbnb specifically. But, you know, then they, and they have to make adjustments when the equipment goes down. So that's why we try to work with them for, for when we can actually work on the equipment, how often we need to do it. And, and along the way, you know, uh, make sure that it it's operating correctly and they're up, they are operating it correctly, which is also right. a challenge. Too. Right. When, so walk me through this, Joe, when you're starting a PM program, um, what's square one? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of exactly what we've done here is, you know, we were, we're asked to do this from the client. They, they've never had any prior, you know, experience or they haven't set anything up yet. So really you have to walk into a space that's unknown essentially and and start gathering information of okay what do we have you know what are the what are the leases say or what we're responsible for get out get the basic information at least you know this is like equipment lists you know some you can you can do you know get the uh, serial numbers and model numbers and stuff like that but it's kind of the basic information get the basic layout lay of the land of, of all the space that you have you know, whether it's multiple buildings and stuff like that, you know, classify it that way. So it's kind of like, you know, you set up a spreadsheet, 
start populating some data to see what you have. Yep. Once you've got this inventory, and actually I wonder, in your experience, have you ever worked with BIM tools from the um, from the AEC community, or are you re- always recreating that asset list uh, from scratch um, by walking around with a flashlight uh, and a notepad? Uh, it depends. Um, it, it depends on what resources are available. Uh, luckily, with most, maybe in the last 20 years, almost everything is is available through you know, digital drawings, whether and not necessarily the physical ones. So you can at least get a base and just record everything, you know, copy paste type thing. And, and then you kind of make it, make little adjustments to that. Yep. So, I mean, there's always, there's always that available and you always, that's, you know, that's the easiest way to populate, start populating your list, you know? So yep. that's, that's, that's kind of where you, where you usually start. And where do you go from there? Um, then you kind of have to, figure out where, like what kind of system you need, the PM, the actual software, essentially it has to have, it meet, meet the needs of, of what you're trying to do. And in general, most of them do. And it's really, and, and the great thing is, is that they're, they're, they've come a long way where they've, they're, you're able to incorporate a lot more information and make it a lot more available to, you know, on your computer, on your smartphone, on tablets and stuff like that. So once you set that up, you have to go through all the paperwork and, that kind of thing uh, to make sure that it's 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 in place, and then at that point you're ready to move on to the next step. What are some of the things that you're looking for when selecting a when selecting a tool? Well, I'm I'm kind of on the I like to look at the most you know kind of what what should be expected from the current levels of technology today. You know, a lot of times in in, in building engineering you get you get you get a system when you first start the building, and maybe maybe it gets a few upgrades along the way, but usually it's it might be antiquated and it might not be the best that's out there. We try to look at the best that's out there, or ones that have been successfully used at properties similar to the one you're working at, mm-hmm. uh, to 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 see if they if they've had success, and then a lot of times you can piggyback off those and and get that information uh, pre-populated at least some of the basic. Uh, you know, tasks and stuff like that. And then you kind of tweak it to the, to your needs. What would an example pre-populated preventive maintenance task be? I mean, is it something as simple as change the filters once a yeah. quarter? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, those are, you know, Heinz has a very specific uh, set of uh, preventative maintenance guidelines that we, we kind of go through. Um, so if they're not provided with the, uh, the manuals, the operation and maintenance manuals, um, that those are the ones we kind of go off. And sometimes ours are more stringent and sometimes the ones for the actual equipment is more stringent. So you kind of start there and then you, you it, it, that's why this, this data gathering really takes a long time uh, or it can is that you have to go through a lot of manuals to really get specifics if you want to if if you're you want to maintain things correctly. So the the implementation, the the very beginning part of PM uh, of a PM program is is just takes a long time. Once it's set up and you have most of the information in there, you know, tweaking it, that's that's like that's the easy part and actually using it on a regular basis. That's kind of the easy part. You're at the point where your PM program uh, is set up and it's ongoing. Um, do you find the PM tickets to pile up? So I, I've worked at buildings where they they pile up. I've worked at buildings where we're you know itching to get the next round of them. You know, and it really <laughs> depends. It really depends on how many how many guys you have in your manpower. But the the really great thing about having a system in place is it dictates you know almost hour by hour how much time it would take. And how much manpower you need to accomplish these tasks, because the 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 it, it creates the proactive approach as opposed to reactive, which is like you know your day to day you know tickets from from the clients, which they can vary, but it, they're they're you kind of can get an idea of how long it's going to take to work on those. But you know, it, it really what I what I use it for is that I can say, well, hey, you know. These are how many hours I need to, to accomplish these tasks, you know, with with a little wiggle wiggle room of how sure. frequent frequently you do it. But then you say, hey, well, that this is grounds for, you know, I need another guy, I need another utility, or I need another engineer, or what or whatnot. Right. 
That's interesting. So, Joe, what is a preventive maintenance nightmare for you? Well, usually when we have a we have an issue where we're, where equipment does go down and we have to tell the client that uh, you know we need to shut them down or need to they have to impact their business in order for us to do our work and and a lot of times those things are out of our control uh, when things fail or or they use things improperly and 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 a lot of those it shouldn't reflect on us but a lot of times it does i mean really we're kind of the face of operations so right. so when those things occur we have to we have to deal with it and, and adapt and and really communicate with the customer and let them know what's going on and that's I mean that's that's part of any any uh, service that we provide, but um, sure. you know we in dealing with those things, that's just part of part of what we need to do, and and we hate to we hate to look bad, but it it happens, and you have to do damage control sometimes. Yeah, and I guess preventive. One of the ideas is that preventive maintenance helps you take an idea of what uh, equipment you have and gets gives you an idea of where you might have some problems and try to begin to prepare for that. Absolutely. You, you really engage with the equipment and then you start to see, you know, what what is what's going to work and what's going to help keep these things going. You know, you end up you, you might end up finding things that aren't anywhere on a, on a, on a Heinz standard or a for preventive maintenance or a, a manual that just from experience of being intimate with the equipment and understanding what it what it needs to do on a daily basis and how frequently you should do that work. You should perform those, those operations and, and fix things. Uh, it, it's, it's, it takes time and it's a little, it's not as cut and dry as it, it may seem, but it's definitely, uh, definitely a pro learning experience, you know, and it, it takes time to kind of really get it dialed in. Is there an idea, do the clients know that uh, you're working so hard to keep their, uh, to preserve their investment? I think the right people that that understand, um, you know, facility management and stuff like that. I think they, I think they understand. Um, obviously, in 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 any environment, you know, we are the experts of the of the equipment that they own. So they they rely on us uh, very much. Sometimes they're they they are very hands off and they just say, "Let me know if you have a problem." Or sometimes they want to know the details of everything that's happening and they want to understand. Uh, you know where their where their money is going and where our where our time is being used and if it's being used wisely. So you kind of get it both, and you you adapt to 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 whoever's paying attention. And and you know especially like for example, you know the food the food team they're 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 highly appreciative because they put in a significant amount of tickets. So when you're maintaining the system and they're and it's working properly, every day that it works properly is a is a thank you from them. You know. Yeah. Yep. You talked about your experience at buildings where the PM tickets have piled up. What are some of the common pitfall, pitfalls that you might be able to share with our audience? You know, are there things that you have learned to avoid? Consider a building which is just about to launch a, a PM program. What are some of the pitfalls that it should be um, concerned about? Well, a lot of it is just, you know, it's that looking at the total time it takes and and really getting an idea sometimes you have to you have to go through a few months even a year to really understand if it's going to pile up or not and 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 you kind of have to adapt it and understand that it's going to take a certain amount of time to do these tasks and sometimes you have workers that do them a little bit faster than others and you have to really get a good average in there and and it, it's really it's a very interactive process with your with your employees i mean you have that's the part where you really have to keep them on task and keep them motivated to continue to do things because it's, you know, we we talked about preventative maintenance not being a very uh, uh, glamorous thing to do, but you know, there's there's no question how critical it is to and and, and to to keep things going and prevent things from actually happening. You know, preventing downtime. You know, it's like you you can guarantee that an exhaust fan running nonstop. For, for a kitchen is gonna is eventually gonna fail. That belt will fail eventually. So if you're checking it regularly, just the fact that you looked at it is can be can be a huge benefit from preventing something from going down, causing smoke to pile up in a room or whatever. Right. You know, so it's it's 
you got that communicating that to the to to my employees, my engineers is is kind of the a way to keep them motivated and keep them on track. You know, they have to understand the impact that that what we do, you know, affects people, it affects everything and that's that's what we're here to do. That's our that's our job description. So, you know, succeeding in that helps our company succeed and helps you know, business as our helps our clients succeed. So it's kind of part of the big picture. Are there other ways of describing the benefits of PM? What are some of the goalposts? I mean, is launching a PM program a lot of work? And if so, how do you justify uh, that initial investment in time and effort? You know, what's the point? I mean, really, it, it comes down to, you know, um, you, you end up saving, you end up saving a lot of money, you keep things running, um, you get equipment that, you know, has a shelf life or an estimated life of, you know, 15 years, 20 years, and it ends up running for 30 something, you know, or, or more. And we've had that happen in, in a lot of our properties. So, you know, having, having that happen, you're, 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 you're setting up for success. And when you minimize downtime, you're saving money. It, you know, sometimes it's not as quantifiable, but yeah. um, you know, you, you really and you're really getting to a point where becoming efficient, and then you're then it, it, there's those impacts that you can't measure, which is, you know, your company starts being known for somebody who keeps equipment running and that that have a success rate, and then that begets more more uh, contracts and more uh, uh, buildings that were that people want us there, you know, and that they, they want, because a lot of, especially with these tech companies, they, when they operate, you know, they want the best talent. They, they, they operate within their own people, but they also want the best contractors that can, can provide the solutions that they're, that are not part of their business. So they want the best group of people to do their, their maintenance on things that they don't understand, but they know will help benefit their operations. And speaking of which, Heinz has long been a leader in sustainability in the built environment. And your CEO talks about the link between sustainability and investment performance, um, building resilience in product relevance uh, and corporate longevity. Can you share with us a little bit about the role that preventive maintenance plays in, in reaching the Heinz sustainability goals? Yeah, I think, you know, the PM system is really, you know, just a core, a core thing. It's a core operation. It, it it kind of is without that, you know, we're just out here kind of just sitting, sitting around waiting for calls to happen and waiting for things to break. Yep. You know, th this really keeps, uh, keeps things running. It keeps things, it keeps buildings healthy, you know, costs down, uh, you know, you keep, and, and it also, some of the things that, it, that are not as, you know, not dealing with energy and, and life of equipment is like you're, you're complying by, all the standards that they're coming out with. So you know, you're making sure you're 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 not leaking refrigerant into the atmosphere, and you're not uh, you're keeping the uh, the indoor air quality good for for these people to be ah uh, yes uh, maximally Occupy. productive. You know, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean they want they want they want to operate in a in an environment where it's, it's safer than being out on the street and working in on a patio at some restaurant. You know, we right. We, we we take pride in keeping the best in, indoor quality that we can we can provide. You know, really, it's it's a it's a constant effort to prove that that the way you're doing it is the right way. We've been doing these setting up preventive maintenance programs on buildings for a very long time. You know, a lot longer than a lot of these tech companies that have been around. <laughs> yep. I mean, and 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 they to have that reputation. You know, this is kind of a way for us to expand what we're doing and and adapt. Because a lot of what's happening at a lot of these buildings is they're giving us less resources. The building owners are giving us less resources, less people, um, and and these buildings are getting way more complex. They're getting way more in depth. And one way that we're kind of, you know, expanding our 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 portfolio is to go into facilities management where these guys do want the best. So it's it's really a great way to help a lot of these these companies along. We're creating new new partners, you know, the Amazons and the Googles and the Facebooks of the world, you know, and Airbnb, obviously, uh, it's, it's kind of a really neat way to go and, and, you know, grow as, grow as employees as well as our company and, you know, help their company grow. Yes, that's awesome and exciting. 
Well, cool. Well, thank you very much, Joe, uh, for your thoughts on preventive maintenance. And I hope that uh, in the future, I can uh, come back for another one of those delicious uh, lunches at, uh, at Airbnb. Anytime. You're always welcome. Uh, thank you for, uh, for hearing me out. I appreciate it.